more grab. And I'm and buzz. Not yet. One more. It's, it's the, oh, the spike. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the buzz. Plus. Plus. I'm great for by Luffy, but Nemo with a conversion. We're getting close to Whoa! the end. Oh, that's the cross up. One, one more hit gets for the game. Oh, oh, oh Nemo's oh! going to take it. Your head's still for 2019 champion. Happy hump day, everybody. Welcome to Esports in 30. I'm Brody Moore, and I got my man, Drew Face, up my side. What's up, dude? Hey, I'm popping, baby. What's good? I uh, know we had a lot going down this weekend, as per usual. So what do we see, man? Oh, man, we saw some Street Fighter action with Head Stomper, baby, mm -hmm. in Sweden, baby. Oh, I love Ikea. And we got some action <laughs> in Thunder Smash. Yeah, man, there was a lot on the line there. But right now, we're going to dive into our first Head Stompers discussion with Damascus. But before we call him up, let's take a quick look at the highlights. Luffy just trying to limit those options. That's a big punish. Wow. No. Yeah, we're getting a more active game now for <gasps> both players. Oh. Yo, two taps in the command grab. Mm. Oh, Mika. Oh, beautiful neutral oh, jump nice. from Luffy. Actually, check the dash with oh. it as well. Ah, uh, problem in a very dire position now. I mean, he's got the resources. He can make it, it happen, does, but yeah. it's going to be really rough. Oh, oh no. the cross up, but that's going to be that. Psycho oh, blast down no. there. Oh, oh he flew over. What's it going to be? Oh, oh! Crush counter, Salt oh. King! Another one! Okay, not another one. Oh, but he oh, gets oh. it! Very good. Very horrible position here. Oh! oh. He tried the delay, he ex head stop! Oh, challenge though for Salt That jab in that situation? Be crazy? Oh. oh! What's next? Oh! I did the super! That's gonna be that. <laughs> Oh, so Mix, unfortunately, eliminated in ninth place. If anything, like, oh, uh, oh what? Oh, no punish. Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually hard to punish when he's a V trigger one. The block stun is so long, but chain. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Uh. reflector gets the hit successfully. But there is a V trigger ready for a second one. And that was really smart from Nemo to get the close. Oh, oh my god! He got through the mirror! One Yo! more punish by Angry Bird! You've got to be ready for that! Oh! Oh! Just did. Was oh. man oh. Yo. ready! Listen, I don't know. This is, this is nuts. <laughs> he was literally waiting for him to be a reversal. No reversal on the young Zeku! Okay, get out of dodge. Oh, oh. And the spacing! How oh. the counter hit confirmed from that far away! Wow. Careful right now. Yeah, that's the first Vichy oh. gun. That's going to be eat Nemo yeah. with the shimmy. And that's going to be a 3 wow. nil Nemo qualifies to grand final. Oh, man. Oh, oh dead. And that's going to be the round. See, Finally. See, that's what I'm saying to the crowd. Like, you, you, you ramp up, you get louder. Yeah. Your boy does well. Yeah, the pink control, oh, oh, are you joking? Yes. Oh, boy. Bro. This is a statement yeah. of superiority from yeah. Luffy. Right. Right. I am the Mika. No matter how much of a king in the north you are, you can't handle Mika. Hey, just reflect on. Realizing there's no more V reverse for there. But oh, oh, dear. Boom. Is he gonna get the oh, mirror? No! The Very lucky for Luffy. Yeah. He just was not. Oh, no! Oh. And he's got him. Wait, where is okay. she? Oh, what? <laughs> what? Are you, are you mad? Oh, oh man, he's got oh. 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 oh! He did it! <laughs> Nemo gets oh. the EX headbutt. Hungry for those 200 points. Plus. Plus. And great back by Luffy, but Nemo with a conversion. We're getting close to the end. Oh, that's the cross up. One more hit gets points. for the game. Oh, oh, oh. Nemo's going to take it. Your head stop for 2019 champion is none other. Liquid Nemo. Head stomper concluded near perfectly as Nemo kicked Luffy in the face to become the champion. To break down all the action with us, we're joined by Street Fighter 5 commentator Damascus. What's up, man? It's been a while. Ah, it's been a while indeed. I'm uh, happy to just be back there. New squad, new name, new everything, and I'm still recovering from, uh, just as you said, an amazing weekend at Head Stomper. It seemed like it. Why don't we jump into it, man? Drew, what do we see, man? Yo, oh, I wow. want look, I want to talk about two players that I was boosting on the show like a few weeks ago. Yeah. And unfortunately, they, they didn't do so hot this weekend, man. We're talking about Angry Bear and Proud Next. So tell me what happened to the homie, dude. Uh, that was honestly that was like a very interesting weekend for like every game street that I included. So first of all, obviously Problem X, right? He's the Evo champ. He's easily the best player in Europe right now. He's the big threat, and he did not even make top eight by Capcom Pro Tour standards. This means he did not even get a single point on the board. Unfortunate for him, but you know we've been talking a lot, and he just said he would rather 
have this kind of unlucky day in a minor tournament like Head Stomper than in a major tournament like Combo Breakers coming up, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I want, I want to dive in. I got a lot more questions actually about him in a bit, but I, I, want, to, I want to keep it positive for a little bit and talk about uh, Nemo, man. Uh, it's been a long time since I've seen him personally in a, in a while, but uh, how was he able to just show up and dominate this? Like, what, what was it that made him pop off here? Well, I mean, the first thing with Nemo, right, is he's usually a guy who only attends the biggest majors to bag as many points as possible and just just go home and qualify, right? This time, this is the first time we ever see Nemo in a ranking event in Europe, yeah. and I believe it's only the third time we ever see him in a ranking event that is not in Asia. He's only been twice to the US for rankings and once in Europe now, so that's very unusual for him. But, you know, like, as of now in Street Fighter V, Europe is starting to be a big threat on the world scale. I mean, mm -hmm. we have Angry Bird who was top eight at Capcom Cup, Luffy who keeps doing well, Phenom keeps doing well, and obviously Problem X. So for a lot of Japanese players, American players, they believe they have to come and just you know try to figure out how to play these guys. Nemo was there, and he plays a character that no one really plays at his level in Europe, Yurian. And you could really see that this guy came with so much in his pocket that it was really hard for all the players to face him. Now, do you think that's like a, a, a matchup knowledge thing that, that helped him out there, or, or was it that he just knows the character so well? I mean, it's not just a matchup knowledge, because at this point in, in Street Fighter V's lifespan, the matchups are pretty much yeah. known by everyone, right? But the thing is, uh, there is the character Yurian, and then there is Yurian as used by Nemo, and Nemo is definitely something else. It's, it's an experience you need to go through, and I think a good example we have of this is, in Winner's Final, uh, Nemo absolutely destroyed Luffy 3-0, and you know, completely like obliterated yep. him, and everyone was like, okay, Nemo is definitely winning this. But then back to Grand Finals and Luffy comes back, resets the bracket, and you could see that just that first set was enough data for Luffy to come back. I think that's one of the things that uh, Nemo had in his advantage, which is none of the European players are really used to face him, except Problem X, who is easily his demon right now. But fortunately for him, Problem X lost before even meeting him. So, I mean, Luffy kind of finished 33rd at the uh, mix-up, but this time he had a, s a strong second place showing. Yeah, now, yeah. Earlier, I predicted that he will, he will start picking up the slack. Do you think he's going yeah, right. <laughs> to he's gonna start improving, going to start being the Luffy that you and I both know, that he's the world beater? Well, you know, Luffy has been a guy that I've been trusting ever since I started watching fighting games, right? He's always a guy doing well. And he's true, had a terrible beginning of a season, final round, bad performance, 33rd at the mix-up. Uh, also at Brussels Challenge, he was not even in the points. He lost very early in Brussels Challenge. So he started Head Stomper with only five points in the bag, which is like really, really small. But right now, you could see that he came back really strong. We talked a lot as well about, you know, the, the mental state that it takes for a competitor yeah. to just stay consistent, especially Luffy, who plays Armika, who is a character who relies a bit more on taking risks. So as a Mika player, it's really hard to be consistent because she's a good character, but she's also a character that relies on your risks. And unfortunately, Luffy's risks didn't really pay off for the first three tournaments, but it looks like he's back on his groove for sure. So yeah, so uh, I think he took out uh, Salty Kid as well as Problem X it was, right? So uh, you mentioned before, why don't we dive into Problem X? Uh, you know, is that is that what it was? He just like met his maker or did Problem X have some like more inherent issues here uh, that he's got to work on? Nah, I mean, you know, so you have to something about this. Yeah, too, yeah right? exactly. It's like in Street Fighter V, in, in the grand scheme of Street Fighter V, I think the worst thing that could ever happen to you ever is losing to two Armikas. Yeah. <laughs> Armika is a character that forces you to read, that forces you to take a decision, and that forces situations where you cannot really have a guaranteed way out. You have to guess your way out. And Problem X just lost to two Mikas in a row who play completely different. So like losing to Luffy, doesn't mean, okay, I'm gonna pre play stronger and beat Salty yeah. Kid, because these two, Luffy is much more solid. Salty Kid is wild. Salty Kid has these days where he's just onto you and he just gets all of the right choices. Mm -hmm. So double Mika is, is unfortunately the thing every competitor tries to avoid. Yeah. That weekend was not Problem X's weekend, really. So, I mean, earlier in season three, we saw Problem X pick Abigail to deal with some of the more difficult matchups with uh, M. Bison. Do you, do you think he needs to pick up a new secondary character? Well, We've been discussing this, you know, with him, because obviously the fact that he won Evo is also relies on the fact that he had Abigail to cover some of his matchups. Yeah. We've seen that Evo, right, he beat Fujimura with Abigail, yep. he beat Luffy with Abigail as well, so it's definitely a good character to cover some of Bison's past matchups. The thing is now, Abigail has been nerfed. Uh, the way Abigail plays now, he still can be a solid character, but he's not the kind of character that's ideal to complete Bison. Uh, knowing Problem X, he's the kind of guy who doubles in lots of characters and he's still looking for a second one. 
as of now he's committed to just Python, but slowly but surely he's kind of figuring out on this season what are the matchups that require a second character. Because once again, this is a year-long season. Problem X is very close to already securing his qualification to Capcom mm -hmm. Cup anyway. And then he has a full season of taking data on which matchup he has to cover. Did you, is there anybody you want to see him play, Drew? I think he should play Birdie. Yeah? Yeah, I think he should play Birdie. Yeah, my well, he did, he did play Birdie in Season 1. You know, Problem X in Season 1 used to play Birdie essentially to counter Karin and Laura. Uh, now, like he's seen the new birdie, he said that he doesn't really like the play style for birdie mm, at the moment, uh, so I'm not sure this will happen. Yeah, you don't want to play a character that you're hating playing, right? Exactly. He wants to win, but he also wants a character that he can, you know, like mesh with. And I think Bison is is basically him in the game, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. Well, let's move on. Uh, talk about Salty Kid, another one that got taken out. He was the hometown favorite in Sweden. How much did that home crowd help him through the tournament? Do you think, or do you think they just block all that out? I got so much. It was so incredibly noisy. As soon <laughs> as Salty Kid would step on the stage, the entire room would just like oh, explode. Big noise. Well, absolutely amazing to just see that. The support, I mean, the Swedish community is quite dedicated and quite passionate. Oh, yeah. And in Street Fighter history, there hasn't really been a lot of Swedish players who could like, you know, beat the world's best. There was guys on Street Fighter 4, there was Katan, there was Poppy, but it was quite unusual moments and now you have salty kid who is very consistent and who has a tournament at home i'm fairly sure that this you know pretty, pretty much gave him wings you know there's a guy you've been talking to me about a few times and you and blitz as well angry bird yeah i, I love angry, angry bird right? but uh this tournament he had some really 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 close sets and unfortunately man he couldn't really close yeah. it out like i mean when he played nemo he almost beat him what happened man what, what makes first of all let's let's talk about angry bird what makes him so dangerous so, multiple things, right? First of all, he plays Zeku, who's a character that's known as being pretty solid, but he's also been a guy who's been playing Zeku for a very long time. He's easily the best Zeku on the planet right now. Yes. His level of mastery of Zeku is ridiculous. So at the moment, for any foreign player who would face Angry Birds, they would have to go through the Angry Bird experience. Even though they think they know Zeku, they don't know Zeku as much as <laughs> the go bad guy the Angry Bird experience. Ooh, it's a, make me it, angry, it sounds dude. like acutely terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of is. To me. I mean, we've had at the mix-up, right? Punk, who is the, definitely the best player at the moment on the circuit, really far first on the leaderboard. His first game against Angry Bird was a very clear 3-0 for Angry Bird. And Punk yeah. finished that one and literally tweeted, I actually have no idea what to do against Deku. <laughs> that's the kind of mental state Angry Bird puts you in. That's that's wild. So is this the year that we're going to see him like jump to like consistently be at that top tier? He's, I mean, Zeku is is an interesting character because he's essentially two characters in one, right? But mm -hmm. at the moment, like a lot of players tend to use Young Zeku a bit more because he's the better, you know, more versatile form. Angry Bird is a good guy to just like switch between one and others. So it feels like. Sometimes when it does not work with Young, he will just switch to old a bit more and change. And I think the fact that he's so good at adapting to his opponents is a big threat. Now, just from learning from, from you know, Blitz, Drew, you, everyone we're calling to, it seems like the European region is just like starting to pop off and get super strong. Is this like true? No, it's always been good in Street Fighter 4. But dude. like to the next level in Street Fighter 5 right now. No, like I, I think a lot, it's just there's more exposure now with more scenes. Mm -hmm. and, and in Street Fighter 4, I think if you had a 15 top European players versus 15 Americans, the Europeans would have won, in my opinion. They had so much strong talent across that, that board. Yeah, are you, like, are you, like, is it just like Europe is, is it just because there's so many more events right now, Damascus, that you think that like, is helping this out and just get more exposure everywhere? I mean, it's, it's part because obviously the Capcom Pro Tour is rich in events yeah. and people are motivated and stuff. But you know, as, as you said, uh, it's exposure really, because back in Street Fighter 4, we had Luffy who won EVO by beating the best players in the world. And you know, who was playing in Europe and who had people like, back in Street Fighter 4, it was Problem X, Valmaster, Gagapa, who could like beat that guy. Oh, yeah. And now it's pretty much the same. We're back in that situation where we have Problem X, who is the EVO winner, and everyone in Europe trying to gun for him. And generally speaking, on a region's dynamic, having an unbeatable champion, is a huge dynamic because everyone is gunning for him, so everyone is getting better to try getting closer and closer to his level. But a guy like Problem X is stubborn. He wants to keep his crown. He wants to keep his throne. I mean, so doesn't? you have every single player just going higher and higher with Problem, trying to make it better. And that's what makes Europe better by, by the weeks. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I just I saw on Twitter that you were you were saying uh, just on, on, to talk about you a bit. You were saying this is the most comfortable you've ever been. What made Headstomper such a standout event that allowed you to just feel right at home? 
So Head Stomper, uh, multiple reasons, right? First of all, that venue was like extremely convenient. The hotel was really great. Uh, the tournament was directly in the hotel, which is standard in America, but you don't see this that much in Europe. I think only two or three uh, or three tournaments in Europe are taking place in a hotel. Mm -hmm. uh, so that hotel was good, you know, nice place, only 10 minutes away from the airport, plenty of food around. But more importantly, and I think that was the highlight for lots of players, was the hotel gave unlimited snacks to the players. We had popcorn, we had ice cream. What? I literally had a beat on commentary with an ice cream in hand, and that was the best time of my life. Okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. why about five there, star man? service, dude? Why I was, I was sweeping at that moment, damn. <laughs> All right, we're going to the next one for sure, though. Absolutely, dude. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's nuts. But yeah, no, it just it seemed like a good event, man. Um, uh, and I'm glad that you had a blast. Uh, I, I've heard a lot of people saying that you, it was sick. You did a great job, man. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, but, I personally loved what yeah. your commentary section, man. It was, it was beautiful. Also, give a shout out to F Word for me. That's the homie, too. <laughs> 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 anyway, Sebastian, we are out of time right now. Thank you for joining us at Chat Street Fighter, and we'll have to hit you up about some Rocket League talk at some point, too. Definitely. We need to play, we need to talk. Any game, I'm always here for you guys. And now we've got to switch it up to some winner takes all action. Over at Thunder Smash, there was $20,000 on the line for first place. Lots of pressure and lots of great smash. So let's check out the highlights. Uh, unfortunate for him to lose that stock. Great on Prodigy, though. Oh, Prodigy! Oh, I Prodigy. thought he was going to throw his stock and go for here. a second one. Oh, he please. wants to go for a second go. one. Here we go, Prodigy. No, because he's winning. Oh, oh fuck, okay. Max. Yeah, I don't, I, yeah Mad Cat's only good for sticks, Max. Anyway. <laughs> oh! Stick a fork in him, TK! If he jumps into Larry and he hits that up smash, yeah. if he, like, is just unsafe at all, yep, there it is. Oof. Has to be so safe. Yeah. The go-to killer tool so oh, much, but he doesn't yeah. need it this time. The back air is enough, and Larry able to slay Void. Wow. Oh, my lord. Oh, you know, you know the gym, bro. You know that that, uh, that the pitcher's always like, you have two options, and they're holding both of them. It's like, who would you let go? And he's like, neither. <laughs> <laughs> Neither. We're all going. Oh! Not oh! <laughs> the tree stock. We know him as like, if he's ahead, he's staying ahead. Great recovery. Oh, oh, what? Oh. No way. Yes. It is enough. Wadi with the three. Oh. That was a close one. Uh oh. And you see him right there. Try to quick attack right underneath. Okay. That would have been a big combo, but that grenade just stopping it short. Oh! <laughs> what is that technology? Uh oh, and the fourth smash just out of range, Woo! makes center stage. Oh my goodness, he's this close. One more hit away. The buzz waiting for the opening. As is Esam hopping in place, and the red Pikmin will do it. The buzz popping off. 124 right now. MVD is looking quite good. 62%. Oh, not a bad position. This is his game to win. Yes, it is, good sir. It'll take a few, honestly, a few honest mistakes. Oh, oh my God! What a roll! Popping off. Oh my goodness! He's on the stage. There it is. MVD winner oh. side of grand finals here at Thunder Smash in Los Angeles. Wadi is just making sure to go from one side of the stage to the other. Doesn't want to deal with that neutral air, but the dash attack, yeah. glancing blow, not the biggest amount of damage. Oh, oh man, and that's the firmware update you want, Wadi. 2-0 right now. Okay, the buzz dashing yeah. in and out of that range of the Nair. All Got that forward smash, though. All I'm seeing right now is the buzz just waiting for that Nair. Oh! oh, he's going Lippo mode. Huge lead, one more hit away, barring a miracle right now from Wadi, and the buzz has completed. The reverse 3-0. Yeah, both options and another smash attack. And right now, it's looking like it might be curtain. Oh, the bus oh. with the photo finish. Amazing spike getting the three. Ah, doc. Woo. Dude, the buzz. What oh. all the way in grand. If the buzz gets this, I think it's over. Okay, he tries to land right there, but the buzz catches him at the tail end of the vulnerability of his air dodge. Oh. And he tries to escape. Can Wait he for the corner? Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh. oh, my God. Oh! 2-0 right now, ladies and gentlemen. Uh -oh. One more grab, and I believe and it was. Not yet. One more. It's it's the, oh, the spike, and there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the buzz. The he buzz. Takes it first. All play. right, the buzz. Congratulations. Has won. 20 grand. A hug from MVD. The first, the biggest victory so far in Ultimate for Team Liquid's the buzz. Well, hopefully DeBuzz has some security on his flight because that's a lot of cash. He had a big wallet, really, too, right? Drew, twenty thousand dollars on it's the line, money, and it was money. like for first place. Like that's insane, man. Like how how does that affect someone's mind when they're competing? Look, twenty thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars is life changing money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like 
there's a lot of pressure to win that, especially when there's like 70 people that enter and you like you're one of the favorites to win, man. Yeah. Do we see people like like their were their games a little more shaky? Like were people like playing a little safer than they usually do? I think a lot of people were more on edge, more pressure than usual. Like some people played more safe, some people played more riskier, some people yeah. were were a little more uh, emotionally distraught when no they were playing. Kidding, dude. Like I saw MVD do something I've never seen him do in years. Yeah, we'll talk about that in a sec, but I just I just want to get into like with this tournament, like what do you think of it? Because I, I know some people were like, this is awesome, I love it, but like other people were like, no, that's it's not fair. Like it's like you gotta spread it out more. What do you think of this? I think it, as a tournament organizer myself, I don't think having a top heavy pot bonus was really a great way to do really, why not, a tournament though? because it's it's like how about does everybody who's placing in the top eight they play the amount the same amount of time they play the same amount of competition mm -hmm. and at any given point especially in smash right now when there's so many people so many great players at any given at any given point one of them can win so it's like i feel like you're rewarding the bad behavior when you don't do that do when, you, like when you just don't spread the pot bonus like i that. guess but do, do you think maybe like it helps promote that competition because it's like now first place means everything like before it's like all right second place is you can you can be happy with that because you're getting a paycheck for it but now it's like if you ain't first you ain't first <laughs> you're I, la like you don't get anything like i mean it as a competitor, if you're a competitor, I think you're gonna like that. You're gonna like yeah. that. You're gonna get heavily the rewarded drive, for, you know? yeah, just to drive. Yeah. Like you're, you're heavily rewarded for being really good at your craft. But I feel like people who are new or getting into the game, then it turns into like, you lose the passion to play the game. You know. Well, if and you're I new to get into the game, I wouldn't even been signing up for that because you know you ain't winning. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Right? But that's why there's that's why I had a low turnout, right? Yeah. In comparison to many of the awesome Smash Ultimate tournaments we see throughout the year so far. That's true. Okay. Well, the guy who took it all, of course, was uh, Liquid to Buzz. Can you just walk us through his tournament? Like, how was he able to make this bank, man? Because like he's got dollar bills now. I think. See, the problem with this tournament was that he's the highest ranked player. In yeah. that tournament, yeah. so it was kind of expected for him to win. So and, this isn't a surprise. And he, and it wasn't even a surprise, yeah. but I think in that last set, man, he barely won. And I think it was because he was both the players were yeah. pressured. And unfortunately, man, my, my boy MVD, he got caught reaching. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> true. Yeah. Reaching, well, before dude. we get to that, like he um, he lost to uh, Wadi in the winners, right? So yes. and then he took it back against uh, Razo Isam, Wadi again, I think, uh, Salem and MVB. MVD twice. Yes. Like, so you're talking about MVD here too, but all these people had to feel the wrath of the buzz here, right? So what, like, he obviously came back, um, but it's like, did you expect to see him losing in the first place? Uh, you know, I kind of did in a way because there's so many characters that he could lose through this tournament. True, matchup knowledge yeah, is The matchup knowledge game, is really yeah. hard, especially in this game where there's yeah. like 73 characters right now. And yeah. uh, I think Wadi plays Rob, so he definitely lost to a Rob player. And who, who, who really plays Rob outside of a few handful of players? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. Uh, I ju I'm probably the only other one. And yeah, I'm not good. See, see <laughs> like, so but, he shouldn't be worried about that character matchup. That's yeah, that's true. But, but he was known as like. Is, do you think maybe it's the characters that causes? Because he's known as like Mr. Consistency, but he had to pull a lot of comebacks. So like it, he was, you know, getting behind and having to pull it back. Do you well, think like? Like, that's like I said, why? Uh, like I said, like. Uh, 18,000, a lot I mean, of pressure. Oh, it's probably on your mind, yeah. yeah. It's probably Play on your safe mind. at the beginning, oh, and yeah. then... He wanted to make sure that he had a, he yeah. secured his victory, but he realized that he probably lost him, himself in the way of his play style. Yeah. So it was kind of it was kind of really weird because he, was, he wasn't he was moving as well as he wanted to. Yeah, like, that's, yeah I guess that's true. Like, Maybe it's just your hands, like, they lock up. Yeah. Like, you can't actually you can't move, right? Like, kind of like, like, man, like tech. he's really playing nervously. But yeah. hey, after he lost, he said, forget it. Like, this, anything can happen. And he ran on that awesome run. I think that's such a smart thing, too, to do is, like, realize, okay, I just lost, and it's likely because I'm being too cautious right now. Yeah. So if you just let your instincts go, that's probably what helped pull him back just, then, for just sure, let, right? Just let fate decide. Just let it go. So just let it go. <laughs> um, now, so MVD, MVD, you get, you're talking about him. Uh, he looked beat up. Like, he was destroying himself after this, man. Like, like he, I mean, I guess you have to because it's, like, there's, you just lost, like, $18,000. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look, he... He was sitting in winners finals. Yeah, sitting there. He had the advantage. That's that's wild. That you got a hurt for a while. How? And the worst part was the last moment. But they were both at high percentage, and all of a sudden he tried to punish something from Olimar, I believe, and clapped. Got clapped. <laughs> it comes down to that. That's crazy though. Like, but it didn't come down to that. Just one one simple mistake, and you lose eighteen thousand dollars. Like, how long before he's over this? 
I, you know what? He's <laughs> he's won a tournament before. He's That's won, true. He's won multiple tournaments before. He is the best snake in the world. Can't yeah. deny that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he would just he'll just get over it. He's a strong player. He's a strong player mentally and fit, like and playing physically so, so okay, yeah I mean that's true like he, he was still kept it in there was still really close yeah. um, you know he'll, he'll probably bounce back now just despite you know of course losing he still showed he's no joke like do you think now at this point like he's better than allies or Salem's like is he the best snake or, or is he I, still kind of in contestion there I it's it's still being in contest an in contestant but I yeah. think he's the best yeah, like why? Like what? What is it? Like is it the setups? Is it just to? I don't know. Just it was overall like I guess macro of the game understanding. So ultimate's a little more neutral heavy. Yeah, uh, and I feel like his skill set is a little more suited for, for ultimate. So therefore his snake is gonna have slightly more edge mm. until Ally finally gets past the whole finite details. Because remember Ally took a break, and played uh, Mario. Mm -hmm. Instead of Snake, so he does uh, switch between two characters. Whereas That's like, true. Yeah, yeah. Whereas MVD only plays Snake, so he's so. got just a little bit more of that experience playing, like the time playing. Uh, absolutely. All right. So, so right now, slitly better than everyone else. Just a little, slightly. just an itty bitty. But Snake slightly. is such a hard character. Um, but uh, we're gonna move on. One of the most notable early exits though was Void. Uh, he was booted in 13th by Larry Lur, and Void's been struggling for a bit now. Can you just walk me through like how he can get back to the top? Like I, what, what's going on with his game right now? I think, well, his character is highly volatile too. So yeah. Pichu is a character that can rack up a lot of damage. Because you but, hurt yourself. <laughs> but you can also hurt yourself too, doing in the process. But he's, the character is also very, the lightest one, the mm. lightest characters in Smash. And yeah. in, in that type of game, if you're a light character, that means you're very easy to KO. So unfortunately, I think he's starting to feel some of the weaknesses in his character. But I'm sure he will also bounce back. So so is it, do you do you think that maybe he's got to have a, get a pocket? Because he's been trying Sheik out. Yes. Right? Do you think that's going to be the savior? Or does he, does he just have to grind in on, on that Pichu? I, I I do think he has to play, I think everybody in Ultimate has to play more than one character at the end of the how, day. How many? Because there are like a billion characters, like how many pockets do you need? I think just at least two. Okay, like, that's So you're going to play two characters. Two, two pockets or just two characters? Just one two pocket. characters, yeah. Just so to cover your bad matchups, right? Yeah, I guess. So I think eventually everybody's going to, at high level, will play two characters yeah. in that game. So I, I, he should be finding other characters. I don't know what character will suit him. It's yeah. a question that he has to find for himself, but I think uh, he should look into... Rob, we need more Robs. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Rob's neutral air is whole godlike. Oh sure. my god, it's amazing. <laughs> but I think he should look into um, finding another character. Maybe that'll help him uh, ease, get through the tournament process a lot better. It'll ease his process, making through the bracket. So who are your characters? Right? Like, so, like, give even me, I just have give to me... play second character. What's that? I even I have to play second character. Yeah. I play Lucina and uh, Inkling. Well, oh yeah, because you're a top tier enthusiast. All day, baby. <laughs> I love what's, winning. What's the tier looking like right now? So it's like, um, like, I, like obviously I'm, I'm focusing more on melee personally, but like, what's has have we seen a lot of shifts, or is it still like uh, inkling at the top there? Um, like I mean, has it shifted at all. I think there's more because this game is so. It's still fairly new. It hasn't been solved. People out. haven't f figured out the characters. Yeah, yet. so I, I can't really give you a definitive yet, but I can say that Lucina is a great character. I can say that Ingling is a pretty good, damn good character. I can also say that Captain Olimar is a great character. I can also say uh, even Snake can be a decent character too. It's like uh, it's a tough tier list. I guess the, the best way to figure tier out list. a tier list is to ask him what character he would would be <laughs> his third character. Who would be your third pickup? Probably Pichu. Okay, so now we know Pichu is a good yeah, character. That's a great character, dude. <laughs> it's the Racks up mad damage and a great recovery option. All right. And Wolf, too. Yeah, Wolf. Wolf. Oh, dude, that Wolf. side. Oh, yeah, my God. That side that's, B is a ridiculous. If you hit that, yeah. that hurts, yeah. yeah Anyways, ridiculous. it is time, though, now to, to kind of wrap up, uh, summarize the weekend with a player of the week, Drew. you got to hit me with who's. Across all the games that happened this weekend in the FGC, who's taken your player of the week? Salty kid. <laughs> so Why? Like, What's, what, what was it? Um, look, determined that he was at, even though it was a ranking event, it yeah. didn't, that doesn't uh, justify how strong this guy did that week. Yeah. He beat Problem X. He, uh, yeah. he also, I believe, he beat uh, Angry Bird as well. Mm -hmm. and that, that's, that's not an easy task. That's not easy. And those were the two best, in my opinion, the two best world-class talents in that region. So what, what is it that you're seeing? Is it like, does he still have a lot of room for potential? Is it Absolutely. Uh, like he hasn't hit his cap yet? What is it that you, you see in this kid? I think he's starting to travel more. And oh, okay. once you travel more, you're going to get a unique experience because you can't, he's from Sweden. Sweden is yeah. not known for having a, not particularly. a large, a large area of talent, but it has a strong concentration mm -hmm. of talent. So him traveling more, especially in Europe, where Europe, as you can see, Europe's a hotbed of amazing players. 
you're going to see him rise mm -hmm. through the top. So I'm glad to see him do really, really well. All right, I'm keeping my eye on Salty Kid. You and he plays here. Mika, man. That character's hype. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that and you mad never want to face any of those really in a tournament. No, Mika's <laughs> trouble, baby. Oh, my God. Anyways, Drew, that is it. We're out of time for here. we got to bounce on. We're going to duke it out in a $10 winner takes all in Smash Ultimate. How about that? Tomorrow is Rocket League Day, and Nick and myself are going to recap week five of the RLCS. Until then, hit us on every at squad state, and we'll see you tomorrow.